Hey, so welcome back for those that are just tuning in. I'm Jesse, and I'm here at the Wolfram Tech Conference 2017, talking to developers and attendees, kind of seeing what they're doing with our, you know, technology and and see what kind of interesting ways they're they're using it in. Uh, so right now I'm here with Devendra, who's going to talk a little bit about what he does here at the company and kind of go over some new uh, improvements to the, the language. So. Hello, Jesse. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Devendra. I work in the kernel development group at Wolfram. <laughs> Uh, I'm very focused on calculus. Uh, I love calculus. I've always done calculus in my life, and I think calculus is probably the most uh, attractive part of the Wolfram language, at least for someone mm -hmm. like me. And uh, it's been there forever, and uh, people use it, students, professors, researchers, mm -hmm. hobbies, Nobel Prize winners, who knows who uses calculus. And my job is to try and make it better than what it is, which is pretty difficult. And then to try and make it more usable, more friendly, more uh, attractive to people who are trying to uh, learn calculus at any level. So that's my job over here mm -hmm. at Wolfram. So what are some of the latest improvements to calculus, which has been around since the introduction of the Wolfram language, and also calculus itself has been around for centuries. So what are some of the latest improvements in 11.2 that were not in, uh, say, 11.1? .1? Right, so 11.2 uh, is the place where we decided that we really wanted to improve uh, what are called limits in calculus. So limits are a part of calculus and they've been there in the Wolfram language in 1988, version 1. But what we've gone and done is to completely re-implement limits. Uh, we've implemented so-called multivariate limits. Uh, we have done a lot of documentation, a lot of benchmarking with millions of examples. And what we have now is perhaps the most usable system for limits in the world. So that's 11.2. And moving forward, we're trying to uh, make things even more um, available to people by doing better documentation and coursework. So perhaps uh, we should just uh, look at some things which concretely show what we've done in the last couple of versions. Okay, so uh, one particular theme that we've been working on is the so-called nth derivative of a function. So, uh, if you look at the function sine x, then uh, the first derivative is cosine, the second one is negative sine, etc. And now what you've got is the nth derivative of this function, just a nice compact formula. And uh, you can do all kinds of things with it, so it's a very generalized kind of calculus, far beyond college calculus. And uh, just a week ago, we learned that Professor Sir Michael Berry, who's uh, a very famous, famous physicist, uh, works on quantum chaos, had published a paper showing that these end derivatives are really like, they're like waves, okay, so they, they, they become, uh, they're like the higher harmonics from music which capture finer and finer tones, and that's what you're seeing over here. You're seeing that the higher derivatives are somewhat like sines and cosines. They capture all the fine aspects of a, of a function, so end derivatives are a very profound and important improvement in the system. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned that there were dramatic improvements for limiting behavior of functions as well. Can you explain a little bit about what sort of improved? Sure. So uh, we have been having limits forever, like I said. Mm -hmm. uh, but my colleague Adam Strasbonsky uh, decided that he really wanted to do everything from ground up. So he's uh, implemented a very, a very important algorithm uh, which essentially solves pretty complicated limits. Mm -hmm. um, we have checked it against every textbook, every published paper as far as possible. But the key thing now is that we can do these so-called uh, multivariate limits. So here you have a function of two variables. You can see it right over here. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the plot, something strange is happening at the origin. Uh, depending on which way you approach the origin, you get different answers. So if you approach it along the line y equal to 0, you get 1. If you put it along the line, x goes 0, you get negative 5. So the limit seems not to exist, and we actually can now show that this limit does not exist. That's a hard problem. Uh, you, you could do some of this on your own by hand, but kind of certifying that limit does not exist requires authority. And my colleague Adam is really an authority on limits now. Uh, he's, he's a bronze medalist in, uh, on the International Math Olympiad a long time ago and he's actually checked through thousands of examples and what now have is world-class multivariate limit functionality backed by every single 
textbook test that you can think of. This this is really incredible because when I was going through my calculus courses, um, I mean, most calculus sequences, they learn L'Hopital's rule, which you know doesn't really work for anything that's, you know, three or n dimension. And so having something that evaluates limits where you don't have to go through that, you know, kind of tedious algebra is really nice to, to have. Yes. Uh, so talk about L'Hopital's rule, you know, L'Hopital's rule uh, has been there forever. Actually, L'Hopital discovered his rule, but uh, it's not known that actually L'Hopital uh, paid Bernoulli to uh, <laughs> write a textbook. So Bernoulli discovered L'Hopital rule, but you know, if you pay someone, you get the credit. So L'Hopital rule really took Bernoulli. And it's, it's really Bernoulli's rule. But uh, L'Hopital rule had a problem. The problem is that L'Hopital rule can go on forever. Mm. So in the 1960s, there's a, uh, there were computer algebra systems uh, at MIT, etc. Mm -hmm. But uh, they would try L'Hopital rule, let's say, six times or seven times, then they would stop. So today we don't we use L'Hopital's rule, but we also go a step beyond that and use uh, something called the Grunz algorithm. Mm -hmm. And so we have a surefire way of catching every limit. And just this week, Adam is working through another thousand examples, checking by hand that they're all correct. So believe me, we have put our hearts into this. It's going to be really great. It, it sounds like y'all thought of just about everything a student would need. Um, can you discuss a little bit more about the sort of education initiatives that you're hoping to sort of do, implement with these, these new uh, features in calculus? Sure. Uh, so, I think if calculus is close to anything, then it's close to education. Mm -hmm. And forever people have been using Mathematica to do calculus. Um, and we have had good documentation. We've got Wolfram Alpha, which is a very uh, nice place to do calculus. But what we'd like to do is to make what we have available in the simplest possible form. Mm -hmm. So, um, the reference base for D and limit and other functions are now being improved dramatically. They have examples from standard textbooks. They have animation like the one you see over here. And typically, uh, these pages are now like a uh, textbook. So you don't need to really go to a textbook to learn the subject. Go to our reference pages, you <laughs> learn it all. Uh, going step beyond it, you know, I taught for a long time and uh, I, I'm, I'm a teacher at heart. You know, I, I, I'm very disciplined and I like to get up at 5.34 in the morning, that kind of thing. You know, So um, I, I think that Teaching is very important and we are trying to use all that we have to give our very own view on calculus. We might even think of doing a small course in the near future uh, where people can come and learn calculus uh, in a very nice geometrical way, in a very friendly setting with the Wolfram language helping them along. So that's our dream. Our dream is to make calculus education even better than what it is today. That really is our dream. Uh, that sounds like incredible. I wish I had the, these features when I was, you know, a freshman taking my calculus sequence. Um, are there so aside from these uh, sort of improved algorithms and and and, uh, and derivative and limiting behavior for eleven point two? What do you hope to do for eleven point three when it rolls out? Ah, that's a good question. Uh, well, we don't quite know. You know, we work as a research team, so we have a plan, and that plan might collapse. Mm -hmm. And um, but uh, for 11.3, we actually are, have got a pretty good plan. The plan is that, uh, you know, at the moment, uh, there are two kinds of computation. People have symbolic computation. Uh, so you have a nice formula which gives you all the information you have, uh, like, you know, D or limit or whatever. And then you have symbolic, uh, you've got numeric computation. So numerical computation means that you do things uh, approximately with numbers, and that's very popular. Uh, what we want to do is to kind of go somewhere between those two. We want to retain the best of symbolics and numerics and uh, do kind of approximate symbolic solutions. So that's a very powerful uh, theme and that's our theme for version 11.3 to try and look at differential equations, um, integral, etc. from an approximate symbolic point of view. So. Everything we've done so far is a build-up to 11.3 where you'll see some dramatic functionality for uh, solving differential equations uh, in a new way, not symbolic, not numeric, but approximate symbolic or what we call asymptotic method. That's where we are really heading from now. Awesome. Well, thank you, Devendra, for talking with me about this. This is really, really cool stuff. Um, and I uh, appreciate you taking the time out of your, out of your busy schedule here. Um, Yes, I do have three talks uh, on thir uh, one tomorrow on yeah. Thursday, a joint talk with uh, Adam, and then two more on uh, Friday. Uh, so we're hoping to give our viewpoint. We put in a lot of work, 
this is the one time we can meet people and tell them mm. what would we do. So thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure. Yeah. Well, I, I hope all your talks go well. That's a lot <laughs> for one conference. Um, so good luck. Thank you.